Hello, my name is James Billingsley, Senior Product Engineer at Nuix, and welcome to this video in which we'll cover an end-to-end -end view of our data platform. Over recent years, Nuix has ramped up its existing traditional technology, taking it in new directions for new investigation workflows, and also investing heavily in new technologies along the way. This video won't cover every single component of Nuix's software suite, but we will cover some of our established and new to market solutions, together providing an end-to-end -end workflow which was never before possible using our data platform. And if we take a trip through history, everything started with Nuix's patented data processing engine, something which still underpins our technology solutions today. Focus was initially on processing structured and unstructured data through the Nuix engine and into Nuix Workbench. As demand grew for capabilities beyond search, our Workbench solution grew to include a huge amount of functionality for more advanced investigations and electronic discovery needs. And from there we tackled how we could better capture that data ready for processing and investigation. Enterprise Collection Center allowed us to reach out and collect that data from remote locations with ease and provide great versatility around what data we could collect and how we went about that. And these two solutions provided the bedrock for workflow for many years. But as times passed, we found our investigation workflows were naturally evolving in consistent directions, such as the need to scale, the need to collaborate and share, the need to conduct visual analytics and relationship analysis. So this natural evolution led us to invest heavily in a development of analytics and intelligence, a web-based interface allowing you to conduct simple and effective relationship analysis across your data through visualizations. Being a web interface, this means it's the perfect way to open up access to a wider team and collaborate and share information as you work. And this is all underpinned by Elasticsearch indices, meaning we can scale like never before, and a graph database to build that rich relationship mapping across our data. But whilst this was happening, we were also tackling a critical need around how and when investigations were actually triggered through development of our endpoint security solution, Adaptive Security, giving real-time visibility of everything that's happening on our systems, allowing us to identify and respond as incidents occur. So now let's look at how all these pieces fit together in an investigation and response scenario. You're a security analyst working in a security operations center, and we've got an alert come in to say someone in our environment is printing sensitive confidential documentation, so printing out critical value data. So we've been alerted to a potential security incident is underway, and we're first gonna to respond to that by looking at our adaptive security console, which we can see here now, and look into that further. So under the alert section by the flame at the top there from system G2L6, we can see two notable print jobs and when they occurred. So now we're going to dig in directly to our list of print jobs recorded and we'll first set our date range that we know and then organize the print jobs by which system they came from, which user account, which was Vito there and which printer that was used. And finally, we'll see the names of the two confidential documents which were printed there. Next, I want to confirm exactly what content was printed out. So I'm going to bring up my remote file viewer and set my date range again and organize by which system it came from. And next what I'm going to do is add a custom filter on these file activity results for the keywords research and also the keyword graphene. And after applying that, I can see references to both those documents that were printed, and I can actually right click on one of those and download those to check that remote document content was in fact marked as confidential data. So I'm just saving it to my file system there. And I'm gonna open that up. And if we scroll to the bottom of the document, we can actually see it's clearly marked as confidential. So we've investigated the details of an alert relating to confidential critical value documentation being printed, confirmed it was Vito who printed that and checked exactly what they were printing. So we've sufficiently concerned about this activity to escalate it further. So now we want to escalate our investigation and go out and remotely capture some more data. So using Enterprise Collection Center here, we've opened up the main administration console 
and we have two people in our high risk team. We have Vito, and we also have his colleague, Graham Katz. So now I've assigned each one of those computers we can see using our remote agent. I've assigned them to the name of their particular custodian, Graham or Vito. And now I'm starting a new collection job, which I'm calling print CVD or printing critical value data. I'm setting what data I'm going to actually collect. So I'm going to collect forensic images from both of those users' systems. And I've now kicked off that collection and all we have to do is wait for that collection to finish. So we've used Enterprise Collection Center there to target the host systems involved in our environment and remotely capture more data for forensic analysis. So now our data has been collected and processed through the Nuix engine into an Elasticsearch case, which we can work on using Nuix Workbench. Opening up the case there, we've also loaded information collected from Adaptive Security on those two notable print events which I'm going to bring up there and do a time pivot of five minutes around those. So I'm going to see what else happened around those events. Now using the workbench filters, I can actually very quickly find an email which was sent within that time period. So I'm going to mark that as notable. Then back to my results. I can dig in and see under system files, I can actually find a recycle bin record. So there was some deletion activity really in that time frame. So I'm definitely interested in what was deleted as well. So I'm going to mark that as notable. And finally, under user activity, we can see a shell bag from the registry referencing an E drive. So is this evidence that a removable drive was being used as well during the time frame? Potentially, so I'm gonna mark that as notable as well. So we found three very interesting forensic artifacts within our time frame of interest there. So doing some quick deep dive forensics there, we leaned on the forensic artifacts workbench was extracting from that collected data for us, specifically focusing on the time frame of interest around Vito printing those documents. We found evidence of communications, evidence of deletion activity, and a suggestion that a possible removable e-drive may have been used during that time frame as well. So finally, what we can do is use visual relationship analysis workflows to very quickly learn about those forensic artifacts we just identified using Workbench. So to get to this stage, our existing Elasticsearch case we were just using there has been migrated into analytics and intelligence, ready for us to do some more work on. Now we've immediately logged into the web interface of Analytics Intelligence there and opened our Graphene project containing our case. The first view we see is a timeline view, but what I'm just going to do there is open up the search bar from the left and bring into view our three forensic artifacts we identified using a time pivot in Workbench. The first one we can see there is our deletion record events. So I'm going to send this to the graph canvas view to see what else I can learn about this artifact. Very quickly, I can see this deletion record is actually for 12 documents being deleted at the same time. And I can check the content of those documents on the right to see what confidential documents were being accessed and deleted. And just arranging those a bit clearer, now let's find out who is responsible for the deletion. There's our Windows account SID, which if we bring out the handle of, we can see it was actually Vito who deleted all of these documents. Now let's go back to our email communication event we identified and bring that onto Canvas. If we want, we can read that email to see that we're discussing sharing confidential documents. And if I visually bring out who received that email, we can see it went to an external Gmail address of Ming Huang. Now we'll see what other emails have been sent by Ming Huang. There's actually quite a lot there. Arranging those again, we can just double check with who those emails were with. And as we expect, pretty much all of them were with our bad employee Vito. All except for this one, which again is discussing exchanging sensitive documents on USB drives. Let's expose who this email is with. It's actually a second employee named Graham Katz who's involved with this security incident. So that's another key piece of information for us. So we started with our forensic artifacts we extracted using Workbench. First identified Vito was deleting quite a few confidential documents around the time frame of printing them. We also found that Vito sent an email to an external Gmail account for Ming Wang discussing sharing confidential documents on USB, something that was also discussed with another employee, Graham. 
Our third and final friends car tap from our registry shell bag reference an e-drive, so there's definitely a consistency there with the removable drive being accessed too. So our final overview recap. We received an alert relating to printing confidential documents via adaptive security. We investigated this using adaptive security to, to confirm exactly what confidential document content Vito printed and when. We then escalated this to use Enterprise Collection Center to remotely capture forensic images of the data on Vito's system and one other system. We then used Workbench to conduct forensic analysis and extracted three notable artifacts within the time frame of that print activity. And finally, using analytics and intelligence, we visually examined those forensic artifacts to quickly establish a mass deletion event, a second suspect employee involved, and references to possible USB devices in use, which we could look into as a final remaining task. I hope you've enjoyed this whistle stop tour showing Numix's data platform and how we can cover each and every stage of the workflow, enabling you to gain visibility of security incidents as they happen in your environment. Respond by investigating the incident, escalating to further remote data collection for forensic analysis, and finally, high level relationship analysis in our collaborative platform. If you'd like to find out more about the Newix data platform or any other of our solutions not covered today, please contact us via our website or social network channels for more information.